Welcome everybody to another edition of Ship Shape, the semi-monthly show where we go deep into the development of the ships that will inhabit the Star Citizen universe. Now, whether you're honing your skills in the dogfighting simulator known as Arena Commander, exploring the Stanton system and beyond in the Persistent universe, or saving the day in Squadron 42's epic single-player adventure, spaceships and vehicles are an intricately interwoven aspect of the very fabric of Star Citizen's experience, and that means ships of all sizes, shapes, and especially purposes. In this episode, we're proud to introduce you to the latest offering from Crusader Industries, a manufacturer players have been familiar with since its introduction into Port Olisar and the surrounding space around the planet Crusader in Star Citizen Alpha 3.2, and who have exploded back onto the ship-making scene in 2948 with the addition of not only the impressive Hercules Starlifter, but today's reveal of the brand new Mercury Star Runner. Yes, sleek, capable, asymmetrical, and perhaps most importantly, fast. The Mercury Star Runner is Crusader Industries' answer to the question, when I've got to move cargo or data from A to B as quickly and efficiently as possible, and maybe a little something on the side I don't want others to notice, what's the right ship for me? Let's check in now with some of the designers and artists who have been working to bring the Mercury Star Runner to life. The Mercury Star Runner is a primarily a data collector, but it also has capacity for storage. So depending on the day, if you want to go collect some data or you want to go collect some storage or cargo, it's entirely up to yourself really, but its primary goal is to collect data. But before you can transport it, you've got to capture it, be, be that from being given the stored data or using the scanners to listen in on data and convert it, encrypt it, store it, uh, and then do the, the running aspect of it. It's got a dedicated scan bay, so it's got a little room off to the right when you go into the main area of the ship. It's got, say, a dedicated area where you can go and scan and collect them. It's also got four dedicated avionics for scanning. And then it also has a, a very large bank of computers and data pods to store that in. It's much larger than the Herald, uh, so it can hold a lot more. The downside is it's a much larger ship than the Herald, so you could be doing multiple trips in a Herald versus spending a lot of time gathering a huge amount of data in this and then transporting it. The development process for this ship, we wanted an asymmetrical ship. We looked at a very cool asymmetrical ship, which was the Millennium Falcon. And luckily enough, we've got a toy model of the Millennium Falcon right next to our desk. But Mike had just recently worked on the Starlifter. So we had a look over the Genesis Starliner and tried to implement some of that in what you see now. Taking the Crusader style that was developed for the Starlifter and transposing that onto something that has to look fast, has to be as asymmetrical. With it being a Ceres first ship, there was a lot of iterations in terms of just sketching out ideas because they're quite fast. Sometimes it's hard when you have too many things to look at. So basically, you know, I'll pick five or six and we'll start trying to just hone it down to what I think Chris will like so that we have like a generally like three options for him to look at. When we're looking at ships, we always have to think about thruster placement and asymmetric ships always cause trouble on that side because the best or strongest thruster layout is a very symmetrical sort of cube or elongated shape where all the thrusters are in line with each other. They can all counter each other equally. If you don't have the hull to support that, then you have to compromise it somewhere. When we were building this ship, we, we knew we wanted to have the asymmetric shape. Some of the early versions were very very different to the final form and they all suffered from that so we tried various explorations to see how we could keep the asymmetric look but keep it symmetrical in terms of its thruster placement. With the Starlifter it was soft curves, there were, there were, you know, it had a double wing, we still, you know, we kept some negative space between that so we took those things across but this is more angular but it works in terms of just sort of you can't make a cargo ship into a fast data runner, things have to change. The interior, I, I got to make it slightly asymmetrical as well, which was really fun. I see it as like, you know, it's flyable level. So in the break area, the hollow chest table that we've put in there has a little switch on it. So you can press it, that goes down into the floor and splits open. You can go into the ventilation system. You know, you can be running around in the ventilation system. You don't really quite know where they are. So they can come up behind you and then, you know, you're like, oh no. I've, I've been ambushed. So you can kind of sort of play a game of, you know, almost whack-a-mole. You know, you think someone's over there and then they pop up over here and 
it, you know, it could make for a quite an interesting sort of combat experience. It just adds that little extra level of gameplay that I really wanted to integrate into it because, you know, it's got purpose and also it, it, it should be really fun, you know, especially if you don't know where they are. <laughs> Weapon-wise, it has two manned turrets in the cargo area, which have a size two. Uh, so if you're getting shot at from the bottom or the top, you're covered. Um, it has full 360 as well, so you know you can get anyone, any pesky people trying to shoot at you and take you down. It also has two front pylons as well, size 2. As you can see from the cockpit, it's totally glass. And you can also see the bottom of the cockpit as well. And through the, the cockpit glass, you can actually see the guns at the bottom. Um, so it would be some really cool seeing the, the guns firing, which is what I really wanted. I just wanted this totally, like, just glass just might as well show them off, you know, like, yeah, some guns firing, like, yeah, you know, like, it's like, yes, it's fab, you know. The people I see that want this in the Persistent Universe, they might have, say, a Herald or a Freelancer, and those are great options for those specific roles, whereas this is, this allows you to do a bit of both. I mean, I'd, I'd buy the ship myself, uh, just for the looks of it. I think it's going to make quite a a big statement when you see one of these things come into a, a truck stop or a, a space station it's sort of everyone's going to turn around and look at it so if you're that sort of person that's that's probably where it's going to be you've never heard of the mercury star runner well it's the ship that made the cathcart junk run on less than 12 checkpoints the mercury star runner concept promotion begins today for all backers and keep an eye out for a special Reverse the Verse Town Hall later today. It's being filmed live from Gamescom in Cologne, Germany, where backers and attendants will get to ask their questions directly to John and Sarah and others, and it will be available on YouTube as soon as it's ready. In fact, chances are that it's happening right now as this video went live, so I better get back to it. For ShipShape, I'm content manager for global video production, Jared Huckabee. Until next time. Like and share if you enjoy the video and think others might benefit from this. And of course, subscribe and hit the notification button if you are new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video.